Hey guys, welcome to Discovering the Unknown. Today we're going to be talking about the Spanish conquest of Peru, and how the Spanish managed to topple one of the greatest empires in all of the Americas. The Inca Empire The Inca Empire was the largest empire in pre-Columbian America. The territory covered by the empire was called Tajuantinsuyo, which means four regions. Its territory covered two and a half million square kilometers, almost a million square miles, from the south of Colombia to the center of Chile, passing through Ecuador, Argentina, Bolivia, and of course, Peru, which was where the greatest political force was concentrated at the time. The empire was ruled by the Inca, which was basically the emperor. The empire's official language was Quechua, and its capital was Cusco. To keep such a large territory connected, they traced a network of roads which covered a stretch of more than 30,000 kilometers, nearly 19,000 miles. Those in charge of traveling these roads and sending the messages from Cusco to the rest of the empire were the Chasqui. These men were a fundamental piece of the relay communication system that the Incas had achieved, and is a very important piece of the history of the Inca Empire and why it became so powerful. The Inca economy was based on a system of multiple reciprocities, a practice of exchanging items with others for a mutual benefit. This allowed for an exchange based on work benefits that was organized through kinship and relationships. In Tahuan Tinsuyu, there was no form of currency, market, commerce, or even tribute as we know them today. In the Inca state, it demanded work in the form of meter that were mandatory rotating shifts for a certain period. In this way, public works were easily built and food was easily cultivated. Agriculture was very important, and the main technique that was used is the cultivation of terraces that allowed farms to adapt and relief and facilitate the distribution of water. Their religion was polytheistic, meaning they believed in multiple gods. These gods were Viracocha and Huiracocha, who was a creator god and the god of the sun respectively, and were both seen as the ancestors of the emperors. Discovery With the Spanish discovery of the Pacific Ocean in 1513, News spread quickly of the existence of rich lands to the south with limitless amounts of gold and wealth. Much of this initial plethora of knowledge came from the son of Comagre, the son of the chief of the indigenous people, one of the most powerful and influential men on the Panamanian Atlantic coast. At this point in time there was a large number of Spaniards concentrated in Panama, including two men, Francisco Pizarro and Diego de Almagro. Francisco Pizarro Considering the context of this video, we should probably introduce you to the future conqueror of Peru, Francisco Pizarro. Pizarro was born around 1478, however the exact date isn't exactly known. He was born in Trujillo, in Extremadura, Spain, which was and still is a small town in Spain situated almost directly between Lisbon and Madrid. By 1502, Pizarro had made his way to America with Nicolas de Ovando's expedition. Here we know very little about his first few years in America. However, in 1510, he participated in an expedition with Alonso de Ojeda that explored areas of Central America. And then in 1513, he took part in Vasco Nunez de Balboa's expedition that resulted in the discovery of the Pacific Ocean. Between 1519 and 1523, we know that Pizarro had decided to settle down in Panama City, where he worked as an alderman and also mayor where he was able to build a small fortune and enrich himself. Fortunes and Wealth Francisco Pizarro eventually became bored of the settled down lifestyle and sought after higher wealth and power. After the rumors of the immense wealth in the lands of the Inca, he decided to unite his wealth with Diego de Almagro. They also partnered with a priest by the name of Hernando de Luque, a figurehead in society, and also a wealthy Spanish banker named Gaspar Espanosa, who wished to not appear officially as part of this endeavor, but nevertheless would be the primary financier of this expedition to Peru and to the empire of the Incas. These partners all committed to a pact on March 10th, 1526, in Panama City, known as the Pacto de Panama, or Pact of Panama. Everyone was ready to undertake this conquest. The governor of Panama, Pedro Arias de Vila, granted them authorization to carry out this conquest with the condition that he would also receive a cut of the profits. Each member of the group had their own responsibilities on the expedition, with Pizarro being the captain, Almagro in charge of the stewardship, and Luque would handle the finances and the provisions of aid. The first expedition, 1524 to 1525. 
Their first voyage started in November 1525, where Pizarro left the port of Panama with 100 soldiers in his crew. However, after arriving on some land, Pizarro and his men were not received fondly by the natives and were attacked, resulting in many of the men being wounded and some even killed. Almagro even lost an eye to an arrow. After this hostile welcoming, they chose to ransack the village and burn it to the ground, earning it the name Pueblo Quemado, or Burnt Town. After this encounter, they chose to return to Panama and recover. Both men agreed that they would continue this pursuit, but for now, the first expedition was over. The second expedition. 1526 to 1528. The second voyage couldn't go much worse than the first one, right? Surely this one be such a vast improvement on the first. Well, after leaving Panama, the crew eventually made their way to La Isla de Gallo. At this stage, hunger and disease was ravaging the crew. So Almagro returned to Panama to retrieve provisions while Pizarro remained on the island with a large number of men who refused to continue with the endeavor. Here Pizarro took extreme action and drew a line in the soil and forced his men to decide whether or not they wished to continue with the expedition. Only 13 of his men crossed this line. These men would be known as Los Trece de la Fama, the 13 of fame. He eventually made his way to Tumbes in northern Peru, and here he managed to confirm the existence of the great kingdom he was looking for. Pizarro at this stage decided to return back to Panama considering his lack of a sizable crew. Upon returning, Pizarro seeked permission from the king himself to conquer these new lands. In 1529, Pizarro met in Toledo, Spain, with King Carlos V himself, to whom he explained both his plans and his claims. This eventually led to the signing of the Capitulation de Toledo on the 26th of July, 1529. In this capitulation, Pizarro was granted the position of Captain General and Governor. Diego del Almago would also receive titles along with the 13 of fame. Pizarro would also receive authorization to conquer Peru, and he soon began recruiting his brothers in Spain for this conquest. The Third Expedition 1531 to 1533 At the beginning of 1531, with all his crew ready, Pizarro left Panama with a force of 180 soldiers in search of the kingdom that would make them all rich and famous. Meanwhile, in the Inca Empire, there was a civil war between Husca and Atanjulpa, which occurred after the death of Hayuna Quepac, the father of the two brothers. In a desperate battle, Husca was defeated, however he was not killed. Triumphant and delighted, Atanjulpa moved south to take possession of the empire. After this event, the Spanish learned that the succession war had ended, and Atanjulpa had become the new emperor. At the beginning of 1532, the Spanish arrived in Tumbes, and Pizarro also founded the city of San Miguel de Pura. His invasion occurred at a point in time where the empire was weakened, a delicate due to the recent war. And there was little resistance to the Spanish forces. Pizarro, knowing where Atanjulpa was, arrived in Cajemaca with his soldiers in November 1532. Pizarro sent Hernando de Soto and then Hernando Pizarro to visit the Inca in his camp, with the aim of inviting him to a meeting. The Spaniards showed gestures of friendship and cooperation which led Atanjulpa to accept the proposed meeting. In this meeting, the Inca disapproved of the Spaniards making use of his possessions, and Aton Hooper ended the meeting, indicating that in the following days he would visit Francisco Pizarro. Aton Hooper settled in the main square of the city of Cajamnoja, which was occupied by the Inca army. The first Spaniard that came out in front of the Inca was the priest, Fray Vicente Valverde. The priest brought with him a Bible and he read to Atanjulpa a petition, a document that urged the Inca to voluntarily accept the Catholic faith and submit to the authority of the King of Spain. After reviewing the Bible, Atanjulpa threw it to the ground. This was interpreted as a blasphemous act by the Spaniards, and Pizarro, given this fact, came out of hiding and ordered the attack and capture of the Inca. Horsemen, trumpets, and the thunder of weapons surprised the natives, and the Inca soldiers had no time or space to organize a defense against the overwhelming Spanish attack. The natives were annihilated and Atanjolpa was taken prisoner. The impact of the scene among the indigenous was devastating, as the Inca had been absolutely humiliated by this. Atanjolpa understood the desires of the Spaniards, and offered them a room full of gold and two of silver in exchange for his freedom. The conquistadors accepted this ransom, however they never actually released the emperor. The imprisoned Inca feared that the Spaniards would begin negotiations with his brother, Husca, 
and for this reason he made the order from his prison to kill his brother. The order was successful as brother was killed before they had a chance to negotiate with the Spanish. The Spanish held Alton Hupa at trial, where they convicted him of the death of his brother, fratricide, being polygamous, an idolater, and preparing to attack the Spanish. Whether or not these accusations were true, he was executed in July 1533, in front of the astonished eyes of hundreds of indigenous people. With the death of Atan Hualpa, the Inca Empire died with him. The next objective for the Spanish was to take Cusco, the capital which the Spanish took with relative ease. While there was technically another emperor after Atahualpa, known as Tupac Hualpa, another son of Huayna Capac, who was named Inca by Francisco Pizarro himself, he is nothing more than a puppet and used by the Spanish to finish off what remained of the once glorious Inca Empire. After Tupac Hualpa died, he was replaced by Manco Inca, who was a supporter of Hausca. However, then Pizarro then decided to form his own capital because the location of Cusco complicated communications. He went to the coast and founded the city of Lima in January 1535, which is now the capital of Peru today. At this stage, with the capital moved and the title of Inca being nothing more than just an honorary thing, the Inca Empire became somewhat forgotten. So that was the end of the Inca Empire, taken out by both poor circumstances and a bloodthirsty, greedy Spanish force seeking wealth and power. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And if there's anything else you'd like to add to this story, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. Also, if you have any topic ideas, feel free to throw them our way as well. And thank you very much for watching.